Welcome to FreeCAD. The purpose of this tutorial is to help us begin using FreeCAD. Here we use version 0.142370 for 32-bit Windows systems. We will change some default FreeCAD settings and learn some FreeCAD basics. The FreeCAD developers consider this version unstable, but in my use it has been very stable. This version includes some functionality that is not in the stable version 0.13. Just remember to save often. Here's how to download this free CAD version. Go to www.freecadweb.org. With FreeCAD installed, a great way to get help is by using the FreeCAD help forum. Go to www.freecadweb.org and click on forum. Be sure to read this before asking for help. It gives us information we need to know, so that the forum members can better help us. There are many different versions of FreeCAD. And the forum members need to know which version we use. So we should include this information when we ask for help. To ask for help we start a new topic. We will include the information about our version of FreeCAD. Go into FreeCAD. Click on Help. Next click on About Free CAD. Click on the Copy to Clipboard button. And click OK. We return to our forum question. Right click in the message body and select Paste. And now the information will be included in our posting. Now we will make importing DXF files more reliable. Switch to the draft workbench. Select Edit, then Preferences. Click on Draft Preferences. Click the Import Export tab. And change the max spline segment from the default 5 to 7. Now click OK. In FreeCAD we can move, resize, dock, or float our toolbars. These are the part design workbench toolbars. The default location of these toolbars has been changed. To keep these changes to the part design slash sketcher toolbars we need to have FreeCAD start in either one of those workbenches. Here's how. Now we will change some preferences in the part workbench. We use the part workbench to create models from primitive shapes. 
For example we may want to make an object by joining two cubes. We will switch to the part workbench and make the model. To start a new model select file, then new. Change to the model tab. Now we will create a cube by clicking on the Create a Box Solid button. Change our view to Exonometric. And create another cube. Now we will change the location of the second cube. Click Box 001. Select the Data tab. Click the symbol at the right of the placement property. And we will move it 5 units over, along the X axis. The first cube we made is box, and the second is box 001. We will combine them. Creating one new solid, by doing a boolean union between box 001 and box. The boolean operation named union is already selected. As is box 001. So we add box, click apply, then close. The new solid is named Fusion. If we expand the tab of our new solid we can see it consists of the solids, Box 001 and Box. Because FreeCAD is a parametric modeler, if we change, for example, the height of the component Box 001, The solid fusion updates automatically. Our model is not refined, so this side is made of three faces. For our next model we will change FreeCAD preferences to automatically check and refine geometry after Boolean operations. We begin this model by clicking File, then New. Notice our existing model is unnamed. And our new model is unnamed 1. Before going any further we will change those preferences. Now we toggle both of these checkboxes to true, and continue creating this model, just as we did previously. This time the sides of our Boolean Union Fusion have been refined. And just like before, if we change the height of box 001, Fusion updates automatically.
No multiple faces with automatic check and refine. But we have multiple faces if we don't refine after Boolean operations. We can refine models made in the part design workbench too. So we change to the part design workbench and build two models as examples. How to create models in the part design workbench is the subject of another tutorial. But to explain it simply, we make a sketch. Pad the sketch to add thickness. Create a new sketch on a face. And pad that sketch. Which makes a new solid. And repeat to make the second solid. The corner of the new rectangle is exactly at the corner of the solid below. So these two faces of our new pad are exactly flush with the faces below. Now we have our two models. Unnamed and unnamed one. Working with the first model, unnamed. We switch to the part workbench. To check geometry. Which checks out OK. And refine shape. Now the faces are refined. The refined model is pad 002. We will look at the dependency graph for unnamed. We see pad 002 is a separate object. Independent from pad 001. Now we will check and refine the second model. But we will use the open as CAD workbench. We use these tools. First we check geometry for errors. It's okay. Now we refine pad 001. And we have clean faces. This time the refined model is. Refine pad 001. The dependency graph for this model shows that refine pad 001 is dependent on the previous items. Refine pad 001 automatically updates if changes are made to the items on which it is dependent. But unnamed actually consists of two models now, pad 001 and pad 002. So if we make a change, Pad 001 updates automatically. But Pad 002 is not parametric. And does not update. Change the thickness of Pad 001. From 20 to 10 millimeters. Pad 001 changes accordingly. Pad 002 does not change thickness. Here both pad 001 and pad 002 are visible. When pad 002 is not visible we see that only pad 001 updated. Pad 001 and pad 002. Now let's see what happens when we change our other model. We change the thickness of pad 001. From 20 to 10 millimeters. And the model changes. Refined shape from the open as CAD workbench leaves the model dependency linear. Refined shape from the part workbench adds an independent model. So remember we get different results based on which refined shape we use. We've reviewed some basic preferences and nuances. Thanks for watching.